If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. Captain A. John Bruce. Afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I bring uh, this bill 634. Oh, by the way, my name's Michael Brewster. I represent <coughs> Pittsfield and Epsom, District 21. I bring this bill forward uh, 634, um, probably for a continuance of a bill that I brought in last year for to. Uh, uh, the 66% of the report uh, assessment fee. When I looked at victims' fund, I saw where 66% was going to the police academy. Um, it just didn't look right when I'm looking at the uh, um, uh, victims' fund on their side. Um, I was, I had a another. Uh, friend, uh, Joe uh, Haas, who saw many years ago, as I did, that uh, the police, uh, the, the fire academy was being raided of their funds by a uh, million point two over these last, put them 20 years, 10 years anyway. Um, so he put, gave to my interest, I already saw where they're being raided by 1.2, but I didn't I overlooked those things because it was only a small rate, only 1.2. I look at bigger rates. Um, so he pointed me to the, you know, why are we giving the police academy this much money when they're raiding it? I had a number constituent from my hometown bring up victims fund. I didn't realize that a police academy and victims fund were tied together. So when I look at the victims fund, and so we're 66, I tried to put a stop to it, and I found out that was their only fund. Um, so that fund was a little more than three point something million dollars coming out of the court assessment fees. And uh, to fix the solution for, for the police academy, uh, at the end of last term, they decided to, to pay for the police academy through the general fund leaving 60% uh, of that fee without being uh, going to a particular dedicated fund. It's empty now. 16.67 um, of that uh, particular fund, that would be the uh, court assessment fees, was going to court IT every year, which was there about $750,000 going to court IT out of the <coughs> victim's fund. 16.67 uh, money went to uh, the advocacy groups group that helps out the victims. Well, that turned out to be the AG's office. So the AG's office is getting that $750,000 and no money for the victims. Um, out of that, uh, because the AG's office does have a victim's fund, they get from the feds another $500,000 for having the victim's fund. They also receive $250,000 for training to disperse this money out for the victim's fund and no money for the victims. But the money comes in through federal, another federal money comes giving uh, the victim $680,000 to be dispersed out amongst the victims. And I did see a list of the victims. There was a lot of victims. But the victims were getting such low money that I seems like a hundred here, maybe two hundred there. The victim that I had from my my constituent who was a victim, um, he, 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 the crime that happened at his house happened so many years ago, and he was just happened ten years later. He's going through a courtroom, and he did see where there's a fund of victims, for <coughs> victims. 
Um, somebody broke into his house and was going to steal all his guns and shoot him and his family, so they all bolted out of the back door and was in the woods and calling the police department. And of course the police had to come, now they bust up his house even more. The bottom line is he was just looking for an advocacy group to get the family's head back together, maybe a shrink or something. And he was so totally shocked that he wasn't aware of all the stuff he went through with the courts and everything. They didn't, they didn't uh, let him know on this. So the way I look at it is this bill was meant for victims, but in the long run, um, it's just giving more money. There's, there's millions of dollars. Earmark's not going where it should be going, and it just stinks. <coughs> So that's all I have to say about that. Um, yeah, it's just, and then if you follow more victims fund, that's the, it just webs out from there where the, that, the court assessment fees only grab $2 out of the assessment <coughs> fees, and that leaves more. So if I follow that further with the uh, Judicial Council, they talk about grabbing some more of his fees and putting 700000 into the general fund. And then you follow other victims in the comprehensive end report. It's just a web of a little boy. You won't believe how far this goes and it just gets lost. So the best thing I can see is just getting rid of the court assessment fee altogether and they'll go that big mess, but maybe we still have to deal with the victim. We're not really Look at that very good right now. So that's all I have to say about that. Any questions? Perfect. Thank you for hearing me out. Please help the victims. We got plenty of them. And the AG's office is not a victim, neither is the court. Chair calls me and Freeman. Good afternoon. I'm Ian Freeman from Keene, one of the co-chairs of the New Hampshire Liberty Party, also one of the board of directors of New Hampshire Jury at nhjury.com. So I pay a lot of attention to the court system. I personally have spent a lot of time with that camera recording various different uh, court hearings of people that I know and people that I don't. And so I've been in a lot of arraignments, I've been in a lot of uh, trials, and I've seen what happens in the courts here. Uh, the victims in this case are the people who are found guilty by the <coughs> New Hampshire court system. They're being victimized by not only having to pay arbitrary amounts of money for what are usually victimless crimes. Uh, in the case of college students in Keene, it's frequently under a possession of alcohol, uh, frequently possession of marijuana, which hopefully we'll be addressing this year. But regardless, we see a lot of people coming into the courts in New Hampshire who arguably have not actually created a victim with their crime. And so not only are they hit with, uh, you know, in some cases a $400 fine, that many of these folks are very, very poor. Uh, it's very difficult for them to pay just the fine as it is, then to have 24% tacked onto that as, surprise, you thought you'd be facing a maximum of, you know, X amount of dollars. Well, now it's 24% higher than what you thought that it might be. And of course, many of these folks are too poor to pay in that moment. So they have to ask the court if they can get on what's called a payment plan. Well, there's another 20% on top of that if you want to pay over time. You get to pay an extra 20% to the court. So now you have 24% on top of another 20%. And of course, if they don't pay, then things get a little bit uh, more sticky for them. So uh, fully support this bill and repealing the penalty assessment. It essentially is a tax on poor people in New Hampshire because it is disproportionately poor people who are affected by these victimless crimes, these arrests for possession of drugs, uh, possession of alcohol, things like that. So I think this uh, would go a long way to helping those people out. The state's got plenty of money. Thank you. I have a question, Brian. Even though you don't think that the uh, defendant was found guilty, should pay? Oh, they have a fine that they're already paying. Right, so the fine is X, up five hundred dollars for you know possession of uh, marijuana. I think it's like four hundred or whatever it is, but it's it's several hundred dollars. So they're already paying a fine for whatever's prescribed in the statute, and then the penalty assessment hits them for another twenty-four percent on top of that. So it's just 
layer after layer, and uh, again, many of these people, they're the ones who are victims in my opinion because they haven't actually hurt anybody. The police have arrested them, usually for some sort of crime that is a non-crime, a malum prohibitum, a crime with no victim, and of course I'd like to see all those wiped off the books, but in the meantime, getting rid of the uh, penalty assessment will help these mostly very poor people, because if you're wealthy, hey, paying the 24%, probably not a big deal. Uh, but if you're having trouble making the rent payment at the end of the month, then that extra 24% may mean the difference between you being able to accomplish that uh, or feed your kids. All right, any questions? Uh, yeah, just a quick one. Okay. Just, to, just to make sure it's clear what you said, you said that there's a 24% of the penalty assessed on top of the fine itself. That's correct. And then on top of that, if they decide to take it, payments over time, there's a 20% interest charge on top of that, too. I'm not sure if the 20% is charged on the original <coughs> fine amount or on the total amount after the 24%, but yes, the courts will charge for the convenience of a payment plan. So it's just layer after layer of, of uh, fines. And so a four hundred dollar fine goes up to five hundred dollars if you, you know, pay the penalty as you have to pay the penalty assessment. And then again, you know, tack on another twenty percent. Well this would work a seven hundred. What's that? We're going to seven hundred years in Yeah. yeah. Something like a credit card. <laughs> I can't lose my credit. And these guys are getting a lot of these people come back in. You know, you, you, we like to think uh, we like to think that uh, the criminal justice system stops people from committing these acts, but we've seen multiple times the same people keep coming back. And I think everybody here knows that you know a college student who's arrested for underage possession is not going to stop drinking uh, after that. They're just going to maybe be a little bit more cautious in the future. So the penalty assessment certainly doesn't uh, have an effect of dissuading people from doing what they do. It just punishes them even further than what the statute has asked to do. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want, oh, I don't know. Of course, we had a So, <clears throat> under our current statute, um, contrary to what the previous uh, witness said, um, monies that are collected as part of this penalty assessment go to the Attorney General's office to be deposited into the Victims Assistance Fund, which is then used to match federal dollars to provide aid to victims of crime to buy funeral plots, to take care of medical expenses from a lifetime of damage done by DWI, to help relocate victims of domestic violence. But that's capped at $30,000 a year. And the state pays no general funds to contribute to that. Do you think if this bill is repealed that we should also do away with the Victims Assistance Fund? I'm not intimately familiar with the Victims Assistance Fund, but I tend to lean on the side that assisting people should be a voluntary, consensual choice. The virtue in charity is when one chooses to be involved in charity, and so I support helping people in need of assistance, but I support raising those funds on a consensual basis. So I think that uh, when you put it out there that, hey, there are these people, here are their their stories, they need help, whether it's a victim of uh, some sort of crime or somebody who's had their house burned down, the community will rally in their support, in my experience. Whether or not the fund exists with the state government, people will help each other. Further questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. I have no other pink bags. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.